Today's daily dose of math is about using the box method to find the correlation coefficient, the r value, for a scatter plot while doing statistics. The r value allows us to judge how strong the correlation is between what we have on our y-axis and what we have on our x-axis. Correlation just means the relationship between these two things that are being measured. To do this, you have to have a scatter plot. So either you were provided with one, and it looks like this, a graph with a bunch of dots on it. Or you would have to have been given a table of values so that you can graph it yourself. And then once you have the scatter plot, you can draw your box. They call it the box, but it's really a rectangle. What we're doing is we're drawing a rectangle that includes all of these points. And then we're using the length and the width of the rectangle in this formula to calculate our R value. The first step I recommend for drawing your rectangle is to draw the line of best fit first. Some students skip this step and they can still manage to get a correct R value and get the question right. But I like to draw my line of best fit first because it allows me to draw a better rectangle. And also the line of best fit is useful for other techniques that I'm not teaching in this video. To draw the line of best fit, I get my ruler so that it goes across roughly the middle of all the points. And what you want is to make sure half of the points land above the line you're drawing and the other half land below. So the way I have my ruler set up right now, I'm able to draw a line that has half the points above and half below. It's okay to draw this line longer than you need your rectangle to be. I have nine points above, nine below. One of the points is really on the line, touching it, but it's falling a little below it. I've managed to do my line of best fit. Now I can use the line of best fit to draw the long sides of my rectangle. I just make sure that the edge of my ruler is parallel to the line of best fit. And I'm judging this by I. And then I draw a line that has all of the dots below it. It's okay for a dot to touch. In fact, it's better if a dot or two here and there are touching the line. You want to draw this rectangle as small as possible. Then I do the same thing on the other side, making sure that the ruler is parallel to the line I already drew. I draw another line. Now it becomes easier and easier to do the final steps. I want to draw two more lines across the short sides of my rectangle. And again, I want to make sure all the dots fit inside the rectangle, but as close as possible. Well, that one's messy, but I can still see it. And the point of doing this is so that you can now measure the length and width of your rectangle so you can use this formula. When I measure these, I'm finding that the length is 30 centimeters. The length goes here, so I'm putting 30 here. And the width is 6 centimeters. Now notice we have the width on top. With rectangles, if you wish, you can say this is my length and that is my width. Usually the length and width of a rectangle are interchangeable. But in this case, what we want to make sure is that the shorter of the two side lengths that we're measuring goes on the top. There's a reason for that. We are subtracting the answer we get when we divide these two values from one. And if the numerator is smaller than the denominator, it means that when you subtract the answer from one, you have to get an answer that is also between 0 and 1. Our values are always either between negative 1 and 0 or between 0 and positive 1. So 6 divided by 30 is 0 0.2 and 1 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.8. I am simplifying what's happening here inside my absolute value symbols. So therefore my R value is plus or minus 0 0.8. The reason for the plus or minus is because the R value works like the slope and 
if it has a positive slope, it's going to be a positive R value. And if the dots and the line of best fit form a negative slope, it'll be a negative R value. We can see from our graph that this is going to be a positive slope. So my answer is positive 0 0.8. All that's left to do now is to judge the R value, to judge the correlation. 0 0.8 is a medium and positive correlation. Now it's important to say that it's positive, even though you might think that it's obvious. You don't want to put the person who's correcting your work in a position where they have to decide whether it's positive or negative. So you say positive. And if the line of best fit had formed a negative slope, then we would be saying it's negative 0.8. The medium part is what we get from the table. There is a table that the students use to judge whether their correlation is strong, very strong, medium, weak, or non-existent. And I don't want to go into too much detail about the table because there's more than one table. Depending on which course you're taking, where you're studying this, you might be using a different table than my students have to use when they're doing the courses that I teach. In the table that my students have to use, 0 0.8, because, because it's between 0 0.75 and 0 0.85, is considered medium correlation. The box method is quite an easy method to use, and most students really like it because of that. You may be in a position where you're given a scatter plot and asked to find the correlation coefficient, and you may be told to use the box method. That can happen in a test question. But what can also happen is you're given a situation and you're asked to answer questions where finding the correlation coefficient is necessary, but they don't specify what method you have to use. In that case, students get to choose their favorite method. A lot of my students will always choose the box method. They find it the easiest. That is today's Daily Dose of Math. Please like, subscribe, and share.